قال الذين كفروا لا تأتين الساعة قل بلى وربي لتأتينكم عالم الغيب لا يعزب عنه مثقال ذرة في السماوات ولا في الأرض ولا أصبر من ذلك ولا أكبر إلا في كتاب بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تمسك بسنته بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear beloved brothers and sisters I'm Zenaid Abu Nasser Once again welcome to my uh, humble library my humble uh, house uh, this, of course, is my uh, a private area, subhanAllah, and this was not uh, intended to be a place of uh, uh, where we record from. Nonetheless, uh, the times we're going through necessitate that uh, certain uh, things are done a certain way. And subhanAllah, so uh, I ask you to forgive me, subhanAllah, uh, as I said, uh, this is not a studio, so if you hear any sounds or any noises in the background, um, there is brothers uh, around, and there's obviously my family is around also, uh, as we as we go through this uh, very important book on Aqidah, of course, and that is Aqidah to Wasitiyah by Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. Continuing on the Sheikh's uh, uh, biography and a little bit more on his life. Uh, you will notice that many times it is said Shaykh ul Islam, Shaykh ul Islam. Now, Shaykh ul Islam, subhanAllah, is a title that was given to Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, uh, by his peers. So, of course, it was given to him by his peers, uh, and it wasn't an official title at his time. Now, during the Khilafah of the, the Ottoman Khilafah, the Uthmaniyyah, uh, while the, the, the Ottomans were in charge of the Muslim uh, world, for lack of a better term, uh, there was such a title, and the title was Shaykh al-Islam. However, this title only applied to one person, and it was only given to the person who was basically sitting on the right-hand side of the Sultan. So the Sultan, or the leader at the time, would have a religious figure who would sit next to him and the title given to that figure would be Shaykh al-Islam and they had to be competent uh, in a number of uh, Islamic sciences uh, to attain this uh, uh, to attain this position now this was obviously what they uh, said or what they claimed however we find that many times uh, in many cases the person was not or was incompetent and was not should not have never been in that position to be known as Shaykh al Islam and be the authority uh, when it comes to al Islam and and the rulings. Um, but at the time of Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, there was no such title, subhanAllah. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, of course, is known as the Shaykh al Islam because he was so um, knowledgeable and his uh, he was so proficient in almost oh, and, and subhanAllah saying in almost is almost saying he wasn't pro, uh, 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 good enough in all of the sciences but he really was this man was a giant he was his knowledge was spectacular the uh, the books he wrote I mentioned in the first part of this that over 900 over 900 of his works were recorded in history now 900 works did not reach us 900 works did not reach us approximately about 150 works reached us now you can imagine uh, he spent quite uh, uh, quite a large proportion of his life uh, as a free man but he spent a large chunk of it inside prison cells and the last imprisonment which was uh, basically the time when he when he passed away when Allah took him up uh, when he returned back to, to his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, he was actually in prison and they had taken the pens and the paper away from him subhanallah 
And so the way his works reached us was through dictation. He would dictate and his students would write. And there was no visiting halls like we have today. Uh, one, of my, uh, one of my duties here is, subhanAllah, I work as a, uh, a grief counselor or as a uh, Islamic counselor in, in the federal prisons here. And I'm able to speak to the brothers who are inside um, and counsel them, mulillahi alhamd. Um, and uh, many times I'm given um, quite, quite uh, a lot of free space where I can, we can sit and talk without anyone watching or, or, or listening. Uh, inshallah, you understand what I'm saying. But at the time of Sheikh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, these were dungeons. These were holes, caves, subhanAllah. He was locked up in the tower of uh, Damascus, subhanAllah, uh, uh, amongst, amongst many other places. And every time he was, uh, subhanAllah, arrested, he was for an opinion. Subhanallah. So he was arrested, uh, rahimahullah. Uh, he was arrested because he said, the man, uh, because of the talaq, talaq mas'ala, the mas'ala al uh, talaq of divorce. Because uh, he, he claimed that the person who announces or pronounces uh, uh, talaq three times in one sitting only counts as one. And the majority of those around him, they said, no, you are wrong. This is gone against everything we believe. Every time it is said, it doesn't matter if it's said in a minute or if it's said over a span of three minutes or a span of three months. Every time talaq is said, it counts as one, one, one. And if he says it three times in three seconds, the divorce is valid and it becomes an irre irreconcilable uh, uh, divorce, as uh, we say in jurisprudence. Uh, it becomes a divorce where uh, the, the, the husband and the wife cannot come back together unless the wife is married and consummates the marriage. Subhanallah. So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he stood up and he said, no, this is not correct. The correct, the correct which they had when it comes to this mas'ala is if a man says it when he's angry and he repeats it three times, it only counts as one. And subhanallah, they put him in prison because of this opinion. And this is just one example of the trials of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Now, as I said, the Shaykh subhanallah was spent quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, time behind um, uh, doors and behind uh, bars, as uh, is probably a better way of uh, saying it. And um, it was at this time when he was alone and when he was uh, completely removed from the other people, from the population, from the populace, and as he was going through these trials, he understood the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. He understood that the Indus was a mercy, a rahmah from Allah Azza wa Jal. And he was always, though he was, uh, uh, though they thought they were humiliating him, and they thought uh, that they were somehow uh, belittling him by doing so, he was always upbeat, he was always smiling, he was always, as Ibn al-Qayyim uh, rahimahullah says, one of the students of Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, he says, Qana uh, Shaykhana Ibn Taymiyyah, our Shaykh Ibn Taymiyyah, we used to go to him, subhanAllah, and he would cheer us up while he was behind bars, Allahu Akbar, such was the state of Ibn Taymiyyah, people would go to him, Allahu Akbar, while he was going through a musibah, while he was going through adhab, while he was going through pain, through trials and tribulations, and people would go to him with their problems, with what's sitting heavy on their chests, and he was able to cheat them up. And subhanAllah, this was uh, just another example of Ibn Taymiyyah and his outlook on the life, subhanAllah. And we get the very famous quote from him, and he says, what can they do to me? What can they do to me? If they imprison me, I'm alone with my Lord, subhanahu. If they send me away from this land of ours, then I'm, this is hijrah for me. And if they kill me, then I'm one of the shuhada bi'ithnillah. What can they do to me? 
whatever they do benefits me. This is, of course, one of the very famous sayings of Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. Now, um, subhanAllah, I mentioned Ibn Qayyim. Uh, I mentioned earlier on uh, Imam al dhahabi in one of the early recordings. Uh, Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, at his time, had major scholars around him. Of course, I have notes. Uh, I wrote some notes. Uh, oh, these notes are actually quite uh, a few years old. But um, uh, notes are something that's encouraged, subhanAllah. One of the things that I encourage people is to have uh, notes. So, subhanAllah, you'll notice on my desk here, on my desk here, subhanAllah, there'll always be uh, a notebook and pen. There's always a notebook and pen. A student of knowledge, and if you go throughout my library and you look around, there's notepads everywhere, filled. Whether it's just one saying, whether it's an ayat, whether, whether it's a hadith, whether it's a transcription of a lecture that I attended, that I was at, uh, there's notepads everywhere. This is something Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was known for. He was able to memorize so quickly. He was able to retain the information that was given to him, that he'd read, that he'd listened to. Good habits, my brothers and sisters, are really hard to learn. But once you acquire them, they will help you throughout your journey in this dunya. And of the greatest habits of a student of knowledge is that they take notes. And the longer you take notes, the better you'll become at that. Islam and ilm is repetition. You read, you recite, you memorize, you write it down, you read and recite it again. This is how knowledge is attained in Al-Islam. So as we go through this journey, bi-idhnillahi azza wa jal, you should have notes, a notepad filled with the notes on um, Aqeedah al and of course on Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah because not only will I be covering al Aqeedah al but I will be touching on other works of Aqaid and other fiqhi opinions that are tied into this work. SubhanAllah. So I just wanted to quickly mention that it's really important that we have uh, a note uh, with us uh, as we progress through this uh, journey. Pen and paper all the time for students of knowledge. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless you all. Um, as for the famous scholars that were alive at the time of Ibn Taymiyyah, of course, we got Alam uh, al-Din uh, al-Barzali, subhanAllah, who was a, a major scholar at his time, at the time of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Taymiyyah. Uh, Imam al-Kabir, subhanAllah. Imam al-Kabir, the great Imam al-Mizzi. Al-Mizzi, subhanAllah, was of course, of course uh, uh, a great muhaddith. And, um, uh, and he praises Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. He praises him, subhanAllah, in some of his works. Taqi uh, uddin uh, al-Subqi. Al-Subqi, subhanAllah, uh, a great scholar. Um, he was of a different opinion. Different, you could even say a different manhaj. To, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah but this did not stop him from praising Shaykh al-Islam from praising him from saying the truth about him these are the scholars of al-Islam Allahu Akbar right? SubhanAllah um, uh, of course uh, Imam al-Dhahabi uh, who, uh, who did naqd al-Rijal SubhanAllah who did a cr critique of uh, narrators of men, of, of from the ulum al-hadith, from the uh, sciences of hadith, is of course uh, ilm al-rijal. It's, it's the knowledge of, of, of the people, of the narrators. Because we as an ummah, we're an ummah of isnad, an ummah in isnad, an ummah of chains of narrators. Al-ilm uh, makana hadathana, hadathana. So subhanAllah, knowledge is he narrated, right? Uh, Abu Nasir narrated from such and such person from such and such person. And then uh, Imam al-Dhahabi would look at these chains of narrators, would look at these narrators and try to find faults in them. So this man, Imam al-Dhahabi, rahimahullah, was 
of the greatest scholars of hadith of al-Islam and he was a contemporary of Ibn Taymiyyah and he was also a student of Ibn Taymiyyah Allahu Akbar so he gives these great uh, explanations and in these great uh, uh, descriptions of Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah of course um, <clears throat> of the very famous uh, scholars at the time and also a student of Ibn Taymiyyah is Ibn Kathir Ibn Kathir subhanAllah the great Mufassir right subhanAllah someone asks us today what tafsir should be should we be looking at or reading or what is the most authentic tafsir they must say go to Ibn al Kathir go to the tafsir of Ibn Kathir rahimahullah Ibn Kathir was also a student of Ibn Taymiyyah and of course I mentioned Ibn al Qayyim Ibn al Qayyim al Jawziyyah one of the greatest writers, one of the greatest scholars, or the one who almost achieved the height of his teacher, Ibn al Qayyim, Rahimahullah, was one of the great scholars of Al Islam. And of course, uh, he was a student of Ibn Taymiyyah. Many times we get information about Shaykh al Islam from Ibn al Qayyim. Ibn Qayyim gives us the information, subhanAllah, about his teacher, about his shaykh, uh, walillahi al-hamd. Oh, <clears throat> as for others, there's also Al-Safadi, uh, Al-Zamlaqani, uh, who was not an enemy, uh, but he was a, um, a competitor, for lack of a better, uh, uh, for lack of a better uh, uh, word. Uh, let's say a, ri a rival to Ibn Taymiyyah. That might be a better... English term to use. Now, uh, also, my brothers and sisters, uh, may Allah bless you all uh, with, with knowledge and, 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 and iman. Uh, you'll notice I'm trying to stick to the English language as much as possible. The, um, uh, when I have to quote something in Arabic, in the Arabic language, I'll quote it, and then I'll give you the translation of it really quickly, uh, straight after it. But because of time, uh, I'm trying to keep this strictly in the English language as much as possible, subhanAllah. And as we uh, become more advanced, then we can start uh, using a lot more uh, of the Arabic terms, etc. Because I actually, uh, one of the reasons uh, uh, I'm doing this series is because I want you to be able to read al aqidatul Wasitiya in the Arabic language, uh, when it is all finished and done. <coughs> now, so... Uh, uh, Al he was a, a rival of Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah uh, and he said in the past 400 500 years there has been nobody who was able to memorize like Ibn Taymiyyah he praised him so much and he was a rival Allahu Akbar he said in the past 500 years there's been no one like this man who was able to memorize and then say uh, it word for word. Allahu Akbar. <clears throat> Many times uh, the memory needs to uh, really stick out because this is one of the major characteristics of Shaykh Sh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Uh, his memory was such that when they uh, took his books away and when they imprisoned him, he was able to replicate word for word, letter by letter major works of al-islam major works of al-islam and there's actually a story when he was a uh, quite a small boy allahu akbar uh, allahu akbar uh, he went to a his father took him and his brother to a garden and uh, um, as he was going uh, to the garden there uh, he had a little booklet with him and he took this little booklet subhanallah and he memorized it in that two hour trip on the way to the garden and back and his father asked him what is it what is it what was that that you were reading and he started to recite the book now keep in mind his father was a Hanbali scholar and his grandfather Hanbali scholar so the, uh, uh, and he was subhanallah he was he would rec he recited back to him basically a book a little booklet which was the etiquette of debating or how to debate in al-islam he'd memorize that word for word in just a two-hour period the whole book on the etiquette of debate Allahu Akbar and this was Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah now some of the characteristics of him <clears throat> we'll mention three or four because it's important one of them 
subhanallah and this is something we need to arm ourselves with of course is dua dua my brothers and sisters is something which is always with you the dua is the weapon of the believer the dua to Allah Azza wa Jal is the arrow, the sword that strikes back when your arms, legs and body is not able to. When you feel distressed, when you feel that the world is against you, when you feel you cannot go one step further, this is when you turn to your Lord Allah Azza wa Jal and ask from Him. Seek forgiveness, seek guidance, seek health. The dua, my brothers and sisters, is something that you need to arm yourself with. And this was one of the characteristics of Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah. He never stopped invoking Allah Azza wa Jal. He would ask from his Lord mornings and evenings. Ibn al-Qayyim says our Sheikh, our Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah would after Fajr spend the whole time until Zuhr invoking Allah Azza wa Jal. He would spend the time from Fajr to Zuhr in Dua. This was Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah who narrates this Ibn Qayyim tells us. When he encountered a problem, the second characteristic, whenever he encountered a problem, he would ask for forgiveness from Allah. How many of us say Astaghfirullah? Allahumma khfirli. How many of us say, Oh Allah, forgive me? when we encounter a problem, an obstacle. Not many. The Messenger ﷺ, he said, I ask Allah for forgiveness 70 times every day. More than 70 times every day. How many days have did you say, Astaghfirullah, oh Allah, forgive me. Rabbi firli, Allahumma firli. How many times? How many days have you said this 70 times a day or more? Right? He would ask Allah Azza wa Jal for forgiveness every time he encountered an obstacle. It was said that he would go to mas masajid outside of the major cities that not many people attended. And he would rub his face with dust and then cry to Allah when he encountered a problem. And ask for forgiveness until Allah Azza wa Jal opened up a path for him. One of the du'as he used to say was, Ya Mu'allima Adama wa Ibrahim, alimni. One of the du'as. O oh, teacher of Adam and Ibrahim, teach me. So simple, so sweet. Success is attained through this sincere, through this sincere seeking the pleasure of Allah only. As long as our intention and our goal is the pleasure of Ar Rahman, then we'll find success. Even if it's through pain, even if it's through illness, even if it's through death. Success will be attained if the pleasure of Allah is what we seek. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah lived and died and sacrificed for Allah Azza wa Jal only. And subhanAllah, uh, the third characteristic I already mentioned, but it, it was his memory. Uh, as I mentioned in, uh, in an earlier recording, He'd memorized the Qur'an by the age of six or seven. He started to memorize Bukhari and Muslim right after that. Then he memorized the books of the madhahib, 
So Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, <coughs> early on as he started his journey as a student of knowledge and later became Sheikh al-Islam, <coughs> he became, he was a Hanbali. And then subhanAllah, he started to look at the Shafi'ah opinion and the opinions of the Malikiyah and the opinions of the Hanabila. And he went on and on and on attaining knowledge. <coughs> and later on, as he matured and wisened and he became uh, more confident in, in, the, in, in, in the accuracy of that, uh, of the knowledge that he, he had retained, he would take opinions not just from the four madhahib, but from the eight madhahib at, uh, at his time. And of course the Zahiriya, the Zaydiya, the Ibadiya, uh, some of them. Uh, at, at his time. Now today, as, as, we, as we know the madhahib today, we recognize the four main madhahib, the Hanabila, the, the Shafi'a, the, Han, the, the, the Hanafis, and the Hanabila. Um, uh, uh, and we also recognize the Zahiri madhab, uh, the madhab of uh, Ibn Hazm, and of course I uh, uh, actually have translated a couple of works of Ibn Hazm, Ibn Hazm, Al Andalusi is, of course, Rahimahullah was also, is also, of course, uh, was also a great influence on my life, just like Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah uh, was. So there is a Zahiri madhab, uh, though it may not be recognized by everybody, but there is a madhab which is a Zahiri madhab, uh, uh, subhanAllah, uh, which doesn't get enough recognition just because of the small amount of people that follow it to this, uh, to this day. So uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah not only memorized the books of the Ahl sunnah but he memorized the works of others also because he wanted to see, he wanted to be able uh, to discern what these other people were saying. He wanted to be able to uh, use their uh, own information, their own facts as they stated, as uh, ammunition against them. So he wrote books about the Shia, right? Subhanallah. I didn't miss I, I, one of the madhahib. I didn't mention, mention uh, uh, the Ithna Sharia, right? The Shia. But he wrote books about them. Why? Because he read their works and he said, this is kufr and shirk. This is kufr and shirk. Now, the ordinary uh, person may not be a kafir or a mushrik. But the one who wrote this, the one who believes this, the guy that's in charge of this, and he's committed kufr and shirk, right? He wrote books about the Christians because he was knowledgeable on their own scriptures and their own uh, uh, creed and their own belief system. So memorization is, of course, one of the great uh, uh, one of the great characteristics of Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. And we're just quickly running out of time. Subhanallah, I wanted to touch on a lot of more uh, points uh, regarding. Uh, uh, the Sheikh subhanAllah and I hopefully I've covered uh, uh, a large proportion of it uh, next bi'ithnillahi jalla wa'ala we will start with al wasitiyah we'll start with al wasitiyah and uh, uh, as we go through aqidat al wasitiyah we're going to break it down line by line uh, word by word uh, and we will look at different uh, renditions of it that have been translated into the English language. Of course, I have uh, one of them here, one of the more famous ones, and this is al aqidah al Wasitiya by Sheikh uh, Muhammad bin Salih al Uthaymeen, rahimahullah. He wrote uh, a Sharh of Aqidah al Wasitiya, one of the uh, popular ones that's out there. There's also uh, Sharh Aqidah al Wasitiya, that's also uh, 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 Dr. Muhammad Khalil. Uh, Darul Salam published it also. Uh, uh, it's a smaller work, uh, uh, but again, uh, we will have all of these books uh, nearby. We'll have there's other also English uh, narrations and translations uh, that we will, uh, inshallah, uh, mention. But we will primarily deal with the text and then the sharh from multiple choices, as I said early on. We want to be as objective as possible. We want to get the information across. We want to be able to understand it, memorize it, and implement it. And one of the things that I characterize as Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah was that he implemented the knowledge that he had. The scholars of today, these 
uh, sellouts, these people who claim to be upon the manhaj of the Salaf, they write encyclopedic volumes, but if pushed, they were not able to implement even 2% of what they say or write. Shaykh al-Islam implemented it, said it, did it, by his words, actions. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us more sincere. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless you. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillahi alladhi lahu ma fi al-samawati wa ma fi al-awdi wa lahu alhamdu fi al-akhirati wa huwa al-hakim al-khabir.